Culture and Media Menon dedicates an exhibition to Yvon Sarouis. The Belgian Camille Claudel, the city of West Flanders where the Belgian-French artist Yvon Sarouis was born on 26 March 1873 is exhibiting until 17 December 2023. At the Cultural Centre and the Municipal Museum, works by the woman who was also nicknamed the sculptor of the New Woman. First a painter and then a pioneer in sculpture. At a time when it was not obvious to a woman, Saruis represented after the First World War modern women, active and in swimsuits or naked rather than stuck in a corset. It recalls the French realist and impressionist sculptor Camille Claudel, a few years her senior. Anne Francois, Saturday, the 19th of August, nine o'clock, exactly 150 years ago, in 1873. Yvon Sarouis was born into a wealthy French-speaking family in the town of Menon, on the French border. On the occasion of this anniversary, the city of West Flanders is dedicating an exhibition to this exceptional artist who created no less than 250 statues, as well as more than 300 glass pieces. She also honored several public contracts such as a monument to her painting and drawing teacher Emile Claus in Ghent 1926 and a war memorial 1921 in her hometown when she died in 1953 in Paris Yvon Sarouis photo bequeathed all the contents of her studio to the city of Menon she had, however, spent most of her life in the French capital, where she resided until her death. Where she made a career, exhibited every year and enjoyed great recognition, Marianne Sturks recently explained in an interview with Radio 1. She is a professor of art history at the University of Ghent, author of a book on the sculptor of Menon and points out that Saruis seems to enjoy a growing interest, also internationally, for women artists. Saruis in his studio in Paris Saruis in his studio in Paris Yvonne Saruis in Har Atelier in Paris close to Camille Claudel Yvonne Saruis began by studying painting and drawing with Emile Claus, of whom she was the first pupil and followed the luminist style, using a sunny palette and paying great attention to light. From 1892 to 1894, the young woman, barely 20 years old, continued her studies in Brussels in the studio of the painter Georges Lemon, with whom she experimented with pointillism. But it didn't suit him entirely, Sturks said. She then resumed her studies with Emile Claus. After a trip to Italy and Greece, Sarouis presented his paintings in 1898 at the Salon des Artistes Francais in Paris. It was at this time that she decided to devote herself more to sculpture than to painting, and returned to study in Brussels, with the sculptor Egade Rombo. In 1904, she set up her studio in Paris. His first sculptures are inspired by Auguste Rodin, the master of French sculpture at the end of the 19th century. Yvonne Sarouis was also close to Camille Claudel, Rodin's young pupil and mistress, whose brilliant career in life ended tragically with a 30-year internment in a psychiatric institution. Sarouis and Claudel knew each other. They were briefly neighbors in Paris. On the Ile St. Louis, they exhibited together and were quoted several times in the same stroke by the press. In some of Yvon Sarouis's works, there are also references to Claudel's sculptures, said Marianne Sturks. This is the case for some groups of statues currently exhibited in Menon. Sculpture was not considered an appropriate craft for a woman Marianne Sturks Yvonne Sarouis exhibited and had her own studio, at a time when it was certainly not easy for a woman to sculpt. Sculpture was considered then, and even sometimes even today, as a male profession, associated with rough, dirty and dusty physical work, for which a lot of strength was needed. Many artists have worked in clay though. But sculpture was not considered an appropriate profession for a woman, explained Marianne Sturks, an active member of the Salon des Artistes Francais. Sarouis met the man who would become her husband, the French writer and journalist Pierre Mill. 
Their marriage was celebrated in Menon in 1909. Subsequently, they organized their own art galleries for several years. Yvonne Sarouis was a woman of her time, both in her work and her convictions. After the First World War, her style changed and she became interested in the new woman, who was becoming more and more visible. A woman who emancipated herself, who no longer wore a corset, who played sports, who cycled, who drove a car and smoked. A woman who wanted to feel free from a physical point of view, who was going to swim in a swimsuit, said Marianne Sturks. It was the 1920s. Skirts and hair were getting shorter. Sarouis represented these new women in sculpture, naked young women in spontaneous attitudes, their hair tied in a bun. At the same time, the Belgian-French artist made hundreds of decorative objects in glass, paste. Just before the First World War, she sculpted two monumental works for the Parisian public space. Like the Fawn Ox on Fonts, 1911, installed Rue Louis Blanc. In the 1920s and 1930s, Sarouis received other commissions for public monuments in Belgium, France, and Tunisia, such as the Statue of a Stork, 1925, for Cyborg or the Stone High Reliefs, War Memorial, 1921, and The Temptation, 1926, for Menon. She also carried out some artistic integration projects in Art Deco style. Yvonne Sarouis was herself a new woman. Sarouis was not a revolutionary woman or a rebellious artist, but a progressive artist, both in her work and her many writings. She came from a wealthy Catholic family, but what she thought and wrote in the memoirs she wanted to publish is surprising. His ideas about the physical and marital fidelity are really progressive, says Marianne Sturks. Sarouis was herself a new woman, first of all because she had chosen the profession of sculptor. The free exhibition, Yvonne Sarouis, Sculptor of the New Woman, is on view until 17 December 2023 at the Cultural Center in the Municipal Museum of Menon, West Flanders, on Wednesday. Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Marianne Sturks's book, Yvonne Sarouis, Bildhauer van de Nieuwe Vrouw, was published by Snoke.